the demise of Borders Bookstores. Today we are going to be talking about how Borders' organizational structure caused the company to file bankruptcy. We are going to begin with a little background information on Borders, then go into how Borders can create value through their stores. And finally, we will talk about several key things that Borders did wrong. Borders Group Incorporated hit their peak in 2003 when they had 511 stores in the U.S. with over 19,500 employees working in these stores. However, in 2011, they went from making bank to filing for bankruptcy. In February of 2011, they were forced to liquidate 399 of their stores in the U.S., and more than 10,000 employees lost their jobs. By September, only seven months later, all of the remaining stores closed. Borders adds customer value in several ways. First off, Borders locates their stores in highly populated and wealthier areas. They tend to be in large shopping centers right off main highways. This adds value by being centrally located and convenient for customers to visit their stores. Another way they add value is by the selection of books they carry. Customers go to a border store to get the book that they want. As a result, borders must figure out what books are hot on the market right now and the books that their potential customers are looking for. The third way borders can get customers to pay more for a book is through the atmosphere of their bookstore. They create a relaxing atmosphere throughout the layout of their stores, coffee shops inside the store, and seating areas where you can read. Consumers shop at a bookstore as opposed to an online store so that they can hold the exact book and flip through the pages. It is also beneficial to travel to the bookstore to find a book based on a certain category. For instance, you may be looking for a cookbook, but have no idea what exact cookbook you want. At Borders, you can go to the cookbook section and browse through the entire selection of books they have. All of these aspects get the consumer to spend more for a book. Even though Borders created value through their locations, selectivity of books, tangible assets, and overall experience of the bookstore, they were not successful. The demise of Borders was due to their poor organizational structure. They failed to react to the disruptive innovation of electronic books and online sales. For years, Borders outsourced its online book selling to Amazon.com. So anytime you visited Borders.com, you were redirected. While at this time, it may have seemed like a smart decision to jump on the coattails of Amazon's success, Relinquishing control to another company hurt Borders' branding strategies and cut into its customer base. Borders saw the new e-commerce phenomenon as just a trend and failed to recognize that e-commerce could add unique value to their company. First off, e-commerce adds value by interactivity. E-commerce technologies allow two-way communication between the merchant and the consumer. Another way is personalization and customization. E-commerce technologies enable merchants to target their marketing messages to a person's name, interests, and past purchases. They allow a merchant to change the product or service to suit the purchasing behavior and preferences of a consumer. Once they realized the unique value that e-commerce adds, Borders ended their partnership with Amazon in 2008. At this time, they decided to create their own online website. However, waiting until 2008 to create their own website put borders behind their main competitors, Amazon and Barnes & Nobles. Failure to adapt to the new ways that customers shop and read books ultimately caused borders to lose a lot of money. Borders may have survived if they focused on their strengths as a retail bookseller, while developing new ways of excelling and distributing online sales instead of outsourcing to Amazon. In a similar situation, Borders did not foresee the rise of ebooks like Amazon and Barnes and Nobles did. It did not develop its own e-reader to compete with the Kindle or the Nook until a year before they filed bankruptcy. 
when you walk into a Borders, you would not realize that they sold ebooks for devices like the Kobo and Cruise. Have you ever even heard of those? In contrast, Barnes & Noble's struck the market with the Nook when it was released in 2009. When you walk into a Barnes & Noble, the Nook kiosk stares you right in the face. The same year, the number of independent bookstores in the U.S. actually increased. The reality is that people are increasingly turning to digital books. In February, ebooks outsold paperbacks for the first time ever, growing 202% compared with the same month last year. Borders did not catch on and emphasized the importance of electronic books, which hurt the company's sales and overall presence. Borders was a bookstore, but over the years, it morphed into a multi-purpose entertainment retailer. In the 1990s, it invested heavily in CD sales. What a bad move that was. Around then, people stopped buying CDs as they began buying iPods instead. When they finally reduced music inventories, Borders found itself with more expensive retail space than it needed, putting additional pressure on its business model. Borders also opened far too many stores too quickly. The stores tended to be expensive and big in terms of overhead. The leases Borders were signing were for up to 20 years, which made it very difficult when they wanted to sell an unprofitable store. As a result, they were forced to keep stores that were experiencing declining sales just because of their lengthy contract. There still seems to be a place for traditional bookstores just not in the size and scope they used to be. In conclusion, Borders' organizational structure was not designed to adapt to the changing technologies of the electronic market. What Borders did not see was that their target market was shifting to e-commerce. Borders was too concerned about the in-store experience, contrasting to the convenience and comfort experience the electronic world provides.